Hello everyone, I am Ovik Chakraborty and today I am going to talk about two inter-UP secure lightweight parallel A modes namely Lotus and Locus. And this work has been jointly done with Nilanjan Datta, Ashwin Jha, Huatemo Pencilas Lopez, Midul Nandi and Yu Sasaki. So this talk covers the specification of Lotus and Locus, its security analysis, uh, uh, its hardware implementation results and some cryptanalytic results on the underlying primitive. So before going to the specification of Lotus and Locus, I would like to give some motivation, mo motivation behind our designs. So uh, consider the scenario of uh, client server architecture and we assume that the server has lots of resource and it doesn't care about resource uh, but it cares about the data processing speed. On the other hand, the client may be a lightweight device that doesn't care much about data processing speed but it cares about resource. So in this scenario, if we want to provide integrity and privacy on the communication channel between this client and server, we need to adopt some authenticated encryption scheme that can be efficiently implemented in a hardware, uh, faster hardware platform as well as in a lighter platform. So parallel modes actually serve this purpose. And also we wanted to achieve a high security bound and preferably the full security bound on the state size such that we can reduce the state size and the block size but still we can achieve the desired security. Next is very important integrity under RUP setting. So frequently it happens that uh, it happens when the receiver's buffer is very small and if the receiver buffer is small and it processes a longer message in that case uh, it's often the receiver release some message bits that is uh, even before the full message is verified. So it is highly undesirable in terms of integrity or authenticity. So we want to have a design that provides integrity even in this RUP setting. And last but not the least, the versatility of the designs. So definitely we want our design to be versatile such that it, it can be efficiently implemented in various platforms. So we have given some motivation behind our design. Let's come to the design choices. So as I've already told you, we wanted to design a parallel mode and we found the best way to start is to begin with a pop begin with some popular structure of popular popular parallel modes like OTR and OCV, the two of the most popular parallel modes. And then add some extra functionalities on the structure to achieve a better performance both in terms of security and in terms of implementation. So to achieve high security bound, we have adopted two techniques. One is nonce based leaking and another is masking and this can help us to get a higher security bound in the standard model. The next, the next point is since we are getting higher security bound we can reduce the block size and state size. And last but not the least integrity under RUP setting so in addition to the nonce based rekeying and masking we have adopted one more technique which is to generate intermediate checksum from a hidden layer of the encryption state. So these three combination nonce based rekeying, masking and generating intermediate checksum from a hidden layer, these three combination makes the design integrity secure under the RUP setting. So this is the overall design choice behind Lotus and Locus. Let's come to the specification. So Lotus stands for lightweight OTR with RUP security. So here we adopt the structure of the mode OTR and we add some additional feature of RUP security over it. So it is efficient in terms of inverse freeness and definitely it is suitable for combined encryption decryption implementation since it is inverse free. Locus stands for lightweight OCB with RUP security. Here we use the we adopt the structure of OCB and add some feature of RUP security over it. Uh, it is not inverse free but it achieves a smaller state size and since it is not inverse free it is suitable for encryption only implementation not the encrypt combined encryption decryption implementation. Now, when we see the structure of Lotus and Locus, you can observe that Lotus and Locus actually differs in the differ in the message processing phase, but the nonce and associated data processing phase are the same. So this is the nonce and associated data processing phase for Locus and Lotus. And here we are adopting we are using a tweakable block cipher where EKI KN comma 2 denotes the block cipher E with a nonce dependent key alpha to the power i into kn okay and the second component 
in the subscript is the tweak and kn is equal to k plus n so you can see that we have adopted a very interesting structure in lotus and locus with respect to the tweakable block cipher because tweakable block cipher uh, in tweakable block cipher the tweaks are mainly used as counter but here we actually use the tweaks as a domain separator so i will come to it later in the in the later slides okay let's come to the message processing phase of lotus so it the, you can see the structure is almost similar to otr except we are extracting some hidden internal states to compute a checksum w xor and you can see that the output of the associated data processing phase is v xor which is a checksum of the outputs of the tweakable block ciphers and in the for the last block message block we combine it with both v xor and w xor and process it using a masking mask encrypt and mask fashion and outputs the final tag okay. so this is the overall structure of the message processing phase of lotus and you can see that this these values 4 7 5 8 they are actually domains and overall we have 15 domains so since the, this design has 15 types of domains so i think 4 bit tweaks are sufficient to represent all the 15 types of domains so here we can adopt a tweakable block cipher with only 4 bit tweaks next is message processing phase of locus it, it has a similar structure to ocb except again we extract the internal state wi states to compute the w xor checksum and combine it with the v v xor the checksum from the associated data processing phase and process it with the last message block in the same manner as lotus to generate the final tag so you can observe that locus and lotus they actually differ in the message processing phase from m1 to mm minus 1 last block is processed in the same way for both lotus and locus and here we have total 13 types of domains so again we, we can use 4 bit tweaks to represent all 13 types of domains now uh, let's come to some structural comparison between locus lotus and the other well known designs so you can see locus and lotus so locus is uh, provides almost the same functionalities as ocb except it provides additional feature of inter up security but with a compromise in the rate so since the rate is here it is half here it is one and lotus it provides all the features and it provides an additional feature of inter op security over otr with a compromise in the rate half and all the other designs they are not as featureful as both lotus and lotus now we have described the high level mode structure of both lotus and lotus along with some structural comparison let's come to a lower level which is the choice of the primitive that means the choice of the tweakable block cipher that we use so here we are there is an interesting point for these designs lotus lotus and lotus and locus so normally in most of the designs with tweakable block ciphers tweaks are used for tweaker tweaks are used as a counter but here we are using tweaks for domain separation so if a design have like 15 domains or 14 domains then we we can describe all these domains with a short tweak so that's the main motivation such that we can use short tweak to design our tbc and we name it short tweak tweakable block cipher or small t and then bc because the tweak is small so this is the framework for designing our tweakable block cipher this is the high level structure and here we, ha we have actually defined a framework which is called elastic tweak framework and what it what, what this framework does it actually converts a standalone block cipher to a tweak, short tweak tweakable block cipher and it actually takes a tweak it takes a uh, some it can take some well known block cipher and it uses a tweak small tweak of t bits it actually expands this tweak with a, with a high distance encoding to make an expanded tweak te and the small t is the size of the expanded tweak and then we inject the exp expanded tweak to the block cipher state after every gap number of rounds okay so here we use the twig gift uh, tweakable block cipher which takes the gift 64 well known gift 64 block cipher it uses a 4 bit tweak expand it to a 16 bit tweak using a high distance encoding and then inject the 16 bit tweak to every uh, after every four rounds okay so most of the tweakable short tweak tweakable block ciphers they actually differ in how to inject the tweak in which position we inject the expanded tweak so here 
we have uh, in gift 64 we have 16 four bit nibbles in the state so we inject one bit each of the one bits of the of this expanded twig to each of the four bit nibbles total 16 nibbles and we and total 16 bit in the expanded twig okay so overall the structure is simple but the main motivation behind this structure is that we can be more confident on the security of the short twig tbc because we are using we can use some well known block cipher we can use aes we can use gift we can use uh, late present anything so in that case we will be more comfortable uh, we will be more confident be for the security of the tbc and definitely uh, twig gift is not exactly same as gift 64 it adds some additional structure so definitely we need to make some additional crypto analysis on twig gift so you can see that if we want to do single if we want to consider the crypt analysis on single key settings if it is zero twig difference then it is exactly the same as gift 64 we don't need to do anything we have sufficient results on gift 64 now since we are using non dependent key in the aed modes so that's why we we can prove our we can prove the security of lotus and locus in the ideal cipher model and we need to analyze the related key <coughs> crypt analysis of this twig gift okay now in related key crypt analysis there are two options one is related key uh, crypt analysis with zero twig difference which is exactly the same as related key security of gift, gift 64 and to the best of our knowledge the best related key differential characteristic is upper bounded by 2 to the power minus 16 79 uh, proposed by Liu et al for 19 rounds of gift 64 and uh, for related key setting with twig difference we have actually adopted some interesting way to do the crypt analysis so gift 64 is a 28 round block cipher and we divide the rounds into cores that means four consecutive rounds forms a core okay so we leave the first two rounds and the last two rounds so intermediate 24 rounds can be divided into six cores okay and then we compute the characteristic for each of the code and we have found that for related key setting the each of the code has characteristic 2 to the power minus 16 so if we have consecutive six cores then we can get an upper bound on the characteristic okay so this characteristic will be 2 to the power minus 96 because six for six cores and each of the code has 2 to the power minus 16 so upper bound of the characteristic is 2 to the power minus 96 and we have found the best known lower bound is only 2 to the power minus 192 okay so the actual C, uh, characteristic will lie between 2 to the power minus, uh, minus 96 and 2 to the power minus 192 and for security in relate uh, in single key setting we have found that one core has a characteristic 2 to the power minus 25.6 so six consecutive core will have a characteristic of 2 to the power minus 153.6 so it is the upper bound and it is already more than 128 Okay. So this is the overall cryptanalytic results we have done uh, on TwiGift. Now we have also implemented the whole design on FPGA and we have also implemented the design uh, TwiGift independently on FPGA. So this is the architecture. I am not going to the, describe the details of the architecture. So this is the architecture and these are the FPGA results. So you can see that the encryption only architecture achieves a much better hardware area than the encryption decryption combined encryption decryption implementation and overall it achieves a, a better frequency and a better area efficiency uh, uh, throughput area efficiency ratio and this is for vertex 6 this is for vertex 7 and these are result for twig standalone twig gift so this is the architecture for lotus when we use twig gift in the structure of lotus aed mode and this is the structure uh, architecture for locus using twigift okay so we just fit the module of twigift inside the architecture of locus and lotus and these are some fpga results for lotus and locus you can see that the state size of locus are smaller is smaller than state size of lotus but overall lotus outperforms locus in terms of the LUTs and slices and also it achieves a better slightly better frequency than locus and almost same throughput as locus but overall the throughput area efficiency ratio is better for lotus than locus uh, it's it's significantly better actually okay. 
So this is the overall FPGA results for Lotus and Locust. And we have also benchmarked Lotus Locust with some uh, existing designs. And you can see that definitely there are several other designs like Acorn or Beetle Light, Beetle Secure, and, and, and a few others, which is which are better than Lotus and Locust in terms of hardware area, as well as in terms of uh, throughput area efficiency ratio. But on the other hand, Lotus Locust provides a versatile features like in addition internal security or implement implementation in faster and lighter platforms both so overall lotus and locus actually achieve some extra features than the other designs and this is in the result in vertex 7 and okay. now we have till now we have described the specification of lotus and locus uh, the cryptanalysis results on the internal primitive and hardware implementation results of Lotus and Locus. Let's come to the provable security of the Lotus and Locus mode. So here we have proved the privacy of both Lotus and Locus and instead of proving the NCTXT security we have directly proved the interup security. So we all know that interup security implies NCTXT security because here the adversary gets some extra power. So if we can prove in interup security we can be sure that we have we also have in CTXT security. So here uh, regarding the privacy security we can have uh, n by n plus k by 2 bit security which is pretty high and if n equal to k then we have full n bit security and if n is less than k then we have even more than n bit security but in the ideal cipher model and we uh, for the for this thing we, we uh, the QE stands for the number of encryption queries sigma stands for the number of blocks in the encryption queries and QP stands for the number of queries to the ideal cipher and sigma v is the number of verification queries. Now coming to the inter UP security. In inter UP security we actually achieve uh, this uh, sigma square by 2 to the power n, uh, n plus k and QV by 2 to the power n bound. So if n equal to k then so in if n equal to k then we achieve n bit security if n is greater than k then actually we achieve less than n bit security but this scenario is not very common okay and here we the adversary gets some additional uh, oracle access and it can make decryption query uh, and uh, what is decryption query decryption query is the adversary can give some cipher text blocks and it can get the corresponding message blocks and it doesn't care whether the cipher text is verified or not Okay, so it just gives a cipher text block and gets the corresponding message blocks. So here it is a extra power for the adversary over the standard security model in, in CTXT security model. So even if we are getting inter UP security, we are actually getting a very high security bound of minimum of n plus k by 2 and n. Okay, yeah, so this is for Lotus and it's it's a, it's a uh, the bound is al almost the same as locus it's exactly the similar so same in uh, n plus k by 2 for privacy and minimum of n plus k by 2 comma n for inter up security so overall i would like to give some intuition so the main reason that we are achieving inter up security is twig values properly differentiates the domains so we can represent all the domains individually using the short twig tbc by changing the tweaks, we have nonce based keys, the key is, def uh, is derived from the nonce and we are getting an intermediate checksum and this checksum is computed by some hidden internal state hidden to the adversary instead of the plain text checksum and this gives an inter UP bound of order of sigma square by 2 to the power n plus k and 2q v by 2 to the power n and, and we, we can also uh, and we all can imagine that the first part comes from the non-trivial collision in input as well as the tweak and the second part comes from the forging attempt. So there are total QV forge, uh, forging attempts. So definitely it should be QV by 2 to the power minus uh, 2 to the power n. Okay. So this is all from uh, all, all about the design of Lotus and Locus. So thanks a lot for inviting me at FSC. So I'll be very happy to answer your questions. Thank you.